Hey guys and welcome back. Today we're going to be painting a really simple composition of some carrots. So we're going to be doing a mix of different colours for the carrots and letting them all bleed together in wet on wet technique. And then we're going to be doing some stems and leaves as well. Let's get painting. then guys let's get started so we're using some of my favorite supplies today so my Winsor & Newton professional paints which are tube paints that I've just squeezed out into my palette here we're using um, the Langton by De La Rowney um, this is 140 pound cold press and we are using Princeton Heritage 4050 round brushes So for our carrots, we are going to use a mix of some oranges, some yellows, some reds and a kind of ready purple as well. So we'll start with the oranges. If you've got an orange in your palette, it's a great one to start with. Um, I'm mixing this in with a bit of lemon yellow deep as well, um, just to get a kind of natural orange rather than a really vibrant pumpkin kind of orange. And essentially when we paint carrots, what we're going to do is paint a long triangle. Um, they're quite a simple shape. So down like that, around the top and down the other side. Now they don't need to be perfect triangles. Um, it helps if they're a little bit wonky, it makes them look a bit more natural. And then I'm just going to fill in the outline with some color. You can see that I'm keeping this nice and wet. What we want is to keep it with quite a lot of water and then when we paint the next carrot we can touch them together and get some nice wet and wet bleeds there. So I'm going to paint that all the way down and then we're going to pick a slightly darker mix with a bit more pigment and choose a shadow side. So I'm going to imagine that the light is coming in this way and then we're going to add darker colour on the other side to give a bit of a shadow. It will help it look nice and three-dimensional. You can see I'm also getting a little dark irregular tip at the bottom there. Keep adding until you've got some good contrast and then we can move on to the next one. Okay for this we're going to use more lemon yellow into the mixture and plenty more water as well. And we're going to do the same thing this time I'm going to start from the bottom and just pull up and we're going to create a shape there and then just allow it to touch a little bit at the top and pull down and round for our triangles. And fill in. It's such an easy vegetable to paint these because they are just triangles filled in with paint. And you can't go wrong. Add a darker, thicker mix on the shadow side again. And then fill in at the top with plenty of water. And then what we're going to do is allow it to just touch there and get some of that orange to bleed in. And pick up a darker mixture on the shadow side again. I'm just going to tweak the shape there, that bit's sticking out a bit. There we go. Okay, next we are going to try a purple. So I'm going to use a dioxazine purple here. And we want to mix that in and then maybe a little bit of lemon yellow just to make it a little muddy um, because purple and yellow are opposites and so that will make quite a good um, carrot type purple. So we're going to do the same thing create our triangle here. I'm going to do this one a little bit lower so I don't want them all to be across in a straight line so we're going to do this one a little bit lower. Allow it to touch and then fill in with some more watercolour there. You can see I'm leaning this one that way as well so they're not all pointing in the same direction getting some great bleeds in there so I'm not going to mess with that bit too much. Add a bit more purple on the dark side, the shadow side. 
and more on the tip as well. Okay, and then finally, we're going to use a yellowy red. So back to our orange and um, yellow mixture, and I'm just gonna add some red into there as well. Make a nice orangey red tone to finish. Okay, brilliant. And then again with the shape and a little bit of bleeding. And don't worry if you have to go over and correct your lines like that. One of the beauties of watercolour is that while ever it's still wet, you can still be playing with it. I'm going to pull this down here so that there's more connection between those two to allow for a bit more bleeding. Round out that top as well. Going to use some pure red just for a bit of a shadow there. Okay, while these are still wet, what we're going to now do is add some of the greenery. So the easiest way to do this with carrots is to pull out the stems first and then use your brush and just press um, for little irregular leaves. They're very tiny, delicate leaves on this. Um, and so instead of worrying about painting each one individually, what we're going to do is uh, kind of do an irregular tapping with the brush um, to create the little leaves. So I'm going to mix sap green and lemon yellow for this one, just to create a nice yellowy green to complement all the warm colours of the carrots. So I'm going to load the brush up and then we're just going to touch where the top of the carrot is, allow it to bleed, and then pull up for some stems. And then the same with the next one. A little bit of a touch there for a bleed, and then pull up. And don't worry if these stems cross over, it will make it look nice and full. It helps to have them all starting from the same place. Um, they all seem to grow out of a small bit on the top. Um, so that's a nice way to keep it looking natural. And then for the leaves themselves, we're going to load up the brush with colour. And then pointing your brush away from you to create the rounded shape, we're just going to tap here for some greenery. Not overthinking it not doing too much detail because we really want the carrots to be the focus here and the greens are just supporting. Just going to tap away, create slightly rounded little leaves there. Now you can see I'm working quite quickly as this goes because what I don't want is like this where the stem dries too much and then the leaves don't seem to sit on the stem. If it's easier for you, um, you can always do this in sections. So do one carrot first and finish that one and then come back. I'm going to go back for a bit more yellow and come and do some other leaves for a bit of contrast. I'm going to restate some stems as well, just so they can blend. There we go, use up the rest of that paint and then we're going to try some darker tones as well. Okay, and now we're back to a bit of pure sap green. Mix it in there and get it nice and light with the water. And then just go and dab that back through anywhere where it's a bit lighter, it needs a bit of contrast. Here, for example, Anywhere where the colours all look too similar, we can go and break that up with a bit of darker colour.
Maybe sad as well. Now what you can do is also run back over some of the stems if you think they all look a bit too similar. You can run a bit of darker colour through there. There we go. Okay, now that the carrots are dry on where the flesh is, we're going to go back in and do some um, wet on dry layering to create the little um, stripes and texture. So what I'm going to do is mix up a colour that is slightly darker than the base one. So here I'm adding a bit of orange to our leftover red mix. And we're just going to pull some little cross lines across like that to give the texture that the carrots have. You can add a bit more water and add some that are slightly lighter um, just to create a good mixture of tones so it's not just kind of stripes all in one colour all the way down. And I'm also going to go over some of those where they look a bit dark and just spread those out. Now we want the lines to be wiggly and random and not straight lines that's going to make it look um, like a zebra is the best way I can think to describe it. Um, for this one, I'm going to add some cadmium yellow to get a really vibrant yellow tone and then just water it down. And do the same thing. You can see I'm not going all the way across and I'm changing direction. So sometimes I'm going backwards, sometimes I'm going forwards. Some are shorter, some are longer. Some are at the edges and some are in the middle. Just to make sure that it looks really natural and organic. Some are going right up to the edges like that. Okay, and then back to our purple. I'm going to add purple and red together to get a nice deep colour like that. These are so soothing to paint because they're just really simple shapes and lines and a bit of dabbing with your brush and it's just a really good way to spend 15 minutes doing a bit of daily painting. I know so many of you um, who are watching this channel are kind of watercolour beginners and you're, you're after something that's kind of simple to paint and doesn't take too long but just looks really nice when you're done and this is exactly the sort of thing um, that, that helps with that. The, making the progress that beginners want to see you know it's just a little bit of painting using some different techniques um, and create something really gorgeous looking as well which is what we all want especially if we are pressed for time oh, and that's not dark enough I'm going to add a bit more purple to that as well and do a similar color on the layers for this one maybe that's a bit too dark that's better if in doubt, add a bit more water. There we go. Almost done. I'm going to add a bit more in there as well. And then that's it. Nice and simple and already finished. All right, there we are. That was really simple, right? And they're just really beautiful vegetables to paint. So please subscribe if you want to see more YouTube videos and I will see you at the next one.